In our last episode, we met a cast of colorful characters with names like Dangerous Dan McGrew, Marge LaBarge, and Athabasca Dick. And we purged some Wanamingos from a mine. It all made perfect sense at the time, but it didn't get us any closer to finding Vault 13. And so heading south, we can head towards Vault 15, which is our best shot at getting the directions we need. Along the way, we see lights off in the distance. But here, in the middle of the desert, as we approach, we see that it's a town. But we've never seen a town of this size before. At last, we stumble upon New Reno. We've heard of New Reno. New Reno was a central figure in the power struggle at Redding, and we even already have a quest here. First, we need to find a guy named Renseco to get a part to fix the air purifiers inside the uranium mine at Broken Hills, and we need to deliver a briefcase to a one Mr. Bishop. This is the briefcase that Thomas Moore at Vault City asked us to deliver for him. Since it's on the way, we'll make a pit stop and try to take care of these tasks. Upon arrival, we park our car in the parking lot. Yeah, it's a bad park job, but it's not like anyone else is gonna park here. These wrecks have been here for over a hundred years. We're overwhelmed by the sheer number of buildings, neon signs, and graffiti. Let's see if we can get our bearings. We'll start by talking to this guy on the street corner with the orange shirt. Hey, 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 welcome back. What is it you need from Jules, my friend? He says that even if this is my first time here, Hey Jules, I've got some questions. Sure thing, sure thing, he says. I got the treasure, so what's your pleasure? We can ask him to tell us a bit about New Reno. He says, can Jules tell you about New Reno? Hell yes, first thing you should know. Reno's ruled by four families. The Mardinos, the Salvatores, the Bishops, and the Wrights. Each of them got a slice of the Reno pie. Tell me about the families, we can say, and he says, Well now, another thing you gotta know about New Reno is nothing's free. If it is, examine the merchandise. Well, looks like if we're gonna get anything from this town, we'll be parting with our coin. We'll pay this guy a hundred bucks to get him to talk. Jules pockets the chips so quickly, we swear they vanished. So, he says, which of the fine families interests you today? We'll start by having him tell us about the Mordino family. He holds up two fingers. The Mordinos are a two-headed beast, friend, and each head's named Jesus Mordino. There's the father, Big Jesus Mordino, and the son, Little Jesus, and both are the meanest sons of guns you've ever met. They used to be slaves here, but they turned the tables years ago and carved out their own little empire. How big is their empire, we can ask? And he says, they own the Desperado Casino just down the street. Can't miss it. They also got the biggest supply of jet in all of New Reno. So if you've got the urge to fly, how come the Mordinos have the biggest supply of jet, we can ask? And he says, they're on top of the pile, friend. Ain't no more reason than that. They've got the factory, the maker, and the distribution. They're like a whole doggone airline that got so much jet. What factory, we can ask? And he says, got factories all over New Reno, cranking out the stuff day and night. That's why you can buy all the jets you need most anywhere. Bars, casinos, on the street, and, uh, <clears throat> of course, from me. Well, what about this maker, we can ask? And he says, yeah, and then he leans in. See, the Mordinos got themselves a little gold mine by the name of Myron. Hit the jackpot with him. See, he made Jet. How extensive is their distribution network, we can ask? And he says, they pump it all over New Reno for starters, up north to the den, and also, uh... But then he catches himself, then shrugs and continues. Well, it's also making its way to Redding nowadays, too, he says, which don't hurt the Mordino's purse none. We just came from Redding. We're familiar just what effect Jet has on the populace there. When we ask him to tell us about the other families, he asks for another hundred bucks. Well, this is going to be a pretty expensive conversation. But given in, we can ask him to tell us about the Salvatore family. A quiet bunch, he says. They're led by Louis Salvatore, an original gangster getting on in years. Their territory's on the west side. Their crib's this bar called Salvatore's on 2nd Street. Don't be making trouble there. Why not, we can ask. 
and he says some free advice. You see a Salvatore, you keep your head down and your mouth shut, or they'll cut you in two. They've got the best firepower this side of CA, so nobody with any kind of sense screws with them, understand? What kind of firepower do the Salvatores have, we can ask? And he says pistols, except they shoot light. Now, Reno's the city of lights, but the light those pistols shine can cut a man in two. Shwoop. Jules makes slicing motions. Makes a clean burn between the two halves, it does. They shoot light, we can say. Do they call the pistols laser pistols by chance? And he says, well, uh, I don't really know. I ain't sure what you're talking about. But take my word for it. Don't go asking the Salvatores about those pistols. They have this twitchy habit of killing people who are curious. Did they always have these pistols, we can ask? And he says, they didn't always have them, else they'd be in charge of New Reno, all of New Reno. As it stands, they're just building up quietly. Those pistols showed up, maybe a few months back, around the time of the massacre. Massacre, we can ask. Oh yeah, he can say, two Salvatore boys with those pistols killed a bunch of Bishop's men, then shot down some of Mordino's boys who've been trying to muscle in on the west side. Since then, the other family steered clear of the Salvatores. Any idea where they're getting these pistols from, we can ask? And he says, no idea, friend. I ain't asking, and you shouldn't either. Take my advice. You're looking for weapons, there's other, safer places you can try. Like where, we can ask? You want weapons, he says. You go see my man Eldridge on West End. He got stuff that'll kill people you ain't even met yet. Tell him I sent you. We gotta pay another hundred bucks to ask him about another family. But when done, we can ask about the bishops. Ha! John Bishop? Not much to say, he says. Bishop's a smart one, though, and he's looking to get it all. Where's his territory, we can ask? And he says he hangs out at the Shark Club up on 2nd Street. He's surrounded by guards, so don't go paying a visit unless you've got real business with him. Then he smiles evilly and keep your business away from his wife and his daughter. Um, business, we can ask? And he says, you know what I mean, brother. Just stay away from them too, lest the thought of being on Bishop's list is something you like. Finally, we can pay him to tell us about the Wright family. The Wrights, he says. <laughs> the Wrights are the only family who are family. The other families, see, they got mercs and tumbleweeds for muscle. But the Wright family is the Wright family, understand? They're a family? How many are there, we can ask? And he says, almost 20 or more true-blooded rights. Mean as spit, and each of them uglier than the next. What do the rights control in New Reno, we can ask? And he says, they ain't got no casino. They mostly deal in alcohol and sell it to the other families. So if you're looking for hooch, they hang out in the east side of town in a big mansion. Well, what about the law in this town, we can ask? And he says, ain't no law, ain't no police, ain't no sheriff, ain't no government body. Just the families. Well, then who keeps order in Reno then, we can ask? And he says, the families keep things running smooth. They don't like trouble in Reno because it hurts the tourist trade. And that means less money for them. Don't make trouble and cover your bets. You'll stay off Golgotha. Golgotha, we can ask? And he says, yeah, this graveyard outside of town. It's where they put debtors and people who've crossed the families. They just string them up on posts and let them die slowly in the sun. Not my choice of dying. Stinks like hell out there. Golgotha, of course, was the name of the hill that the Romans used to crucify Jesus Christ. Well, where can I get some chems, we can ask? And he says, brother, you need look no further than humble Jules himself. I got it all. And if I ain't got it, you don't want it. Shall we get down to business? Well, first, what kind of chems can I get in New Reno, we can ask? All kinds of stuff, he says. I got stuff make you horny, make your woman horny, make you hard, make you happy, make you strong, make you smart, and of course I got the chem, the stuff that'll let you fly, jet. Where does jet come from? Has it always been around, we can ask? And he says, well, uh, Jet comes from here, Reno, I mean. It ain't been around long, but it's in demand. Know what I'm saying? Then he winks. Number one reason we get tourists like yourself. 
but why did Jet come from here, we can ask? And he says, ah, oh, now, see, family Mordino struck the jackpot one day when they found this little brainiac called Myron. Seems he's a natural when it comes to the making of chems. He made Jet. Myron, huh, we can say? Where can I find him? And then Jules leans in. Now, I don't want to go on about the less pleasant new Reno sites, but there's this building, the stables, north of town, heavily guarded by the Mordino family. That's where Myron is. The stables outside of town, you say, we can say? And he says, yeah. The Mordinos keep old Golden Boy there, give him chips, whores, anything he wants, as long as he makes chems. Jet was his finest. Ain't seen anything so habit-forming in a long time. Turned Reno around, it did. Think I could meet this Myron, we can ask? And he says, whoa, now, brother, here's some free advice. Don't you go be looking to meet Myron, because the Mordinos catch wind of that, they'll gut you and let you die on Golgotha. Isn't there any way I could see him, we can persistently ask. And he says, well, if you're a fine-looking woman, maybe, but otherwise you'd need the Mordino's permission first. Both ain't very likely. We can take him up on his offer to trade us chems, but we see his inventory is disappointing. He has no money to barter with, a couple of stim packs and three doses of jet. That's some big talk there, Jules. I'm looking for supplies, we can ask. And he says, you need some supplies. Well, you can go see Renseco up on the West End, but here's the catch. Don't buy no chems from him, because they ain't safe. He's got supplies, all right. But if you want chems, talk to me. Perfect, Renseco. He's the guy we're looking for, to get that part for Broken Hills. I'm sure he's harmless. I bet Jules here is just trying to warn us off his competition. Then we can say, I want to get laid. And he says, I hear you, brother. Most tourists see they stride down Virgin Street and get suckered by some two-chip whore. You look like you got class. So head on over to the cat's paw across the street there. Tell him Jules sent you. We'll have to keep that in mind. Hey, Jules, I'm looking for a place called Vault 13. You mean Vault City, don't you, he says. That's to the northeast. Can't miss it. All the caravan trails lead right to it. Looks like he doesn't know what we're talking about. And finally, we can say, I'm looking for a Garden of Eden creation kit. And he says, Garden of what? That's some kind of chem? What does this garden thing do? Get you high? Looks like that's about as far as Jules can help us. Well, this cat's paw place is right across the street. Might as well start there. Standing on the sidewalk just outside the cat's paw, we find a man employed to attract attention to the establishment. Attention booty shoppers! Take advantage of this booty sale, he says. Buy one piece of booty at the regular price, and you get another piece of booty of equal or lesser value for only a chip. Try and beat booty for a chip. If you can find cheaper booty anywhere, Pump it! Booty booty bootay! Come on in, booty lovers! Here at the Cat's Paw, we're slashing prices in half. Give us an offer on our prime selections of booty! It's a booty blowout! We got white booty, black booty, southern booty, northern booty! We got hot booty, cold booty! We got fresh booty! We got... <laughs> Smelly booty! We got tribal booty, we got mutant booty, red scorpion booty, robot booty! We even got brahmin booty, ghoul booty, deathclaw booty! Come on, you want booty? Come on in, booty lovers! If we don't got it, you don't want it. Come on in, booty lovers! Okay, I think a place that has deathclaw booty might not be a place I want to go. But peeking inside, we see that he's lying. Thank God. No death claw. We find a woman in a tight, short black dress standing behind a counter. The woman before you is stunningly beautiful. As you address her, she looks up from her work and smiles. Ah, a new face. I'm Miss Kitty. Welcome to the cat's paw. What's your pleasure today, sir? Um, actually, I'd like to ask you some questions. Sure, she says. What questions do you have? But the only kinds of questions she can help us with are related to sex. We can say, I'd like to hook up one of my friends here. It's their, um, birthday. Of course, she says. Then she scans our companions. Which one? We'll start with Vic. Trader Vic. This your friend here? She looks our companion up and down and nods. I think we can accommodate you. 192 chips. 
192 bucks? Oh, that's pricey. But if we agree, the screen goes dark, Vic appears in one of the hooker's rooms, and every hooker in the place talks at the same time. Is it in yet? A couple of them say. Yes, yes, you have monster balls, says another. Oh God, 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 says another. No, I'm not going to wear the Mickey Mouse ears, says yet another. And the chosen one applauds. Clap, 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 he says. And Sulik whistles. But sadly, Vic doesn't seem to have anything to say about his recent predicament. So waiting for Miss Kitty to get back, she says, damn Macrosoft spreadsheets, before sitting down. We can do the same thing for each of our companions. Next, we'll try Cassidy here. I think it's been a while, we can say. And Cassidy's the same price. With Vic engaged in one room, Cassidy appears in the one next to it. And every hooker in the place begins to spontaneously chat at once. You're so rugged, you're like hardened power armor, says one hooker to Vic. Yes, yes, you are the Vault Dweller. Yes, you found the water chip and beat the master. You're a hero, says Cassidy's girl. Need a moist towelette, says one. Give it to me. Fur knee skull. Uh, sorry, what was your name again? Says another. And then they begin to repeat themselves. But the chosen one says, way to go, as he cheers on Cassidy. And Vic whistles. When Miss Kitty returns, we can try the same thing with good old Sulik. I'd like to hire a companion for old Bone Nose here if you catch my drift. <laughs> says the chosen one. It again costs 192 caps, and he disappears into a completely different room. The hookers all spontaneously shout the same things we've already read, and sadly the chosen one doesn't have any side commentary for Sulik. Poor Sulik. If we have Lenny the Ghoul in our party, we find an option to say, could you take care of Lenny? I don't think he's ever even kissed a girl. But for Lenny, it costs 703 chips. And after the screen fades to black, the poor girl assigned with the task says, Oh God, oh God, oh God, now are we finished? Running inside, sure enough, this is the one who got assigned, poor old Lenny. Each companion elicits a unique response from the chosen one, and sometimes even the hookers. I'll make sure to stop by with each new companion that we get. Getting tired of being in New Reno, she says. Yeah, after that, I don't blame her. Nasty little crotch cobra there. Oh. First time I've heard them described as that. Been worn out ever since that last convention. Still don't know why they call it Virgin Street. Look, for the last time, I'm not going to dress up as the Vault Dweller. I finally installed that padded headboard. Sorry, what were you saying? I was too busy staring at your taut body. I need $50 to make ya holler. Ugh. I'm Dirty Spice. Yeah, this game was made in the 90s. <laughs> Only sports going on in Reno nowadays is tonsil hockey. I'm not cheap, but I am on special. I can do anything you want for the right price. Wanna dance? With our companions taken care of, we can take care of ourselves. Jules told me to come here if I was looking for some action, we can say. She smiles and winks. Is that so? Well then, you've come to the right place. Whatever your pleasure or fantasy, we can provide it. And don't be shy, we've heard it all. So what would you like? Depends, says the chosen one. What's on the menu? Well, she says, and she ticks off the menu on her fingers. We have Honey Loving, the Dipstick Swirl, Hum Jobs, and various other exotica. Then she smiles. Question is, what are you in the mood for? We can start by saying, Oh God, I'd like some oral attention. All right then, she says, that'll be 84 chips. After handing over the money, we appear in one of the rooms, the same room with Cassidy. And this time our companions cheer us on. Cassidy says, wahoo. Vic says, way to go boss. Ain't had sex myself in a long time. What is he talking about? I let him go first. If we try to talk with the hookers, they do have other things to say, but they all pull from the same dialogue pool. Well, well, look who just rolled into town. Wanna fly? Row. Loving like silver right here. Nick Casting is a really nice guy. We have great conversations. This is a reference to one of the developers for Fallout 2. Bit of an inside joke Easter egg there. 
I'll fit you like a flesh tuxedo, really? Okay. This is a reference to the mockumentary Spinal Tap. My baby fits me like a flesh tuxedo. I can't believe how many strippers were at Fergus's bachelor party. This is another reference to a developer for the game. Fergus here was one of the founders of Obsidian Entertainment. Tying you up costs extra. Child, let me make you a man. Where did I leave my whip? Looking for some company? So he dresses up in this Deathclaw costume, then... Things are pretty slow. I wish that caravan would show. I wish Gen Con took place in some other town. Gen Con is a real-world tabletop game convention. At the time Fallout 2 was published, Gen Con took place in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Guess the developers of Fallout felt that that was too far away. Or too close. When done, we can go back to Miss Kitty and see what else is on the menu. I'd like a full upper and a lower body workout, we can say. But this is more expensive. All right, she says, that'll be 168 chips. After paying her, we again appear back in the same room. Heading back to Kitty for round three, this time we can say, is it okay if I just, you know, talk with them? And she says, why, of course you can. We call it the casting special. Only costs 84 chips. <laughs> Another reference to a Fallout developer, and we'll just leave it at that. We talk for hours. The girls at the Cat's Paw have amazing insight into human nature. And by choosing the casting special, our speech skill increases by 3%. This time we appear in a different room. And the hooker here says, need a moist towelette? Tommy the Balls is so dreamy. We never meet Tommy the Balls, but he seems to be famous or infamous in New Reno. Many of the people we'll find walking around the city talk about Tommy the Balls. How big do they have to be to be named after them? Oh, hello, Mr. Tyler. Going down. And this is a reference to the famous Aerosmith song, Love in an Elevator. Oh, good morning, Mr. Tyler. Going down. <laughs> I heard some of the girls uptown killed their pimp. When in doubt, whip it out. <whistles> Look, I don't give free samples. Want to pretend we're death claws in mating season? No thanks. A, C, D, C, B, and D, whatever. I don't get that one. I know A, C, D, C is a band, but I don't get the B and D part. You need a guide around town, sugar? You ain't never had love till you had Reno love. I heard Vault City has only two types of citizens. Maybe it was some cloning accident. She is, of course, referring to the lack of unique genetic material that Vault City is currently suffering from. I hate tea bags. Well, why? They're useful. They help you make tea. Oh, she must be a Halo player. I'm Old Spice. Oh no, she's a Spice Girl, okay. Make me melt. Can you hammer a six inch spike through a board with your penis? You know, they do say that every now and then you'll read a completely unique sentence. Hmm. But no, this isn't unique. It's a quote from the 1985 film, Real Genius. Can you hammer a six inch spike through a board with your penis? Not right now. A girl's gotta have her standards. Somebody had to come up with that and then write it in a script. So many things went wrong here. Or right, depending on how you look at it. Anything I can help you with, stranger? Prrr. Wish Myron would move away. Far away. Need someone to share your bedroll? I'm a virgin. I'm just not very good at it. Want me to tighten your screws? I felt the earth move, but it was just the chili. Looking to pop a clip? Want to wrestle? Ew. I'm just doing this to pay for college. Okay, I think I've had enough. Moving on, we can go back for round four. I have a special dramatic request, we can say. And she says, chances are that we can accommodate you. Your request would be... And she has the same response to both of these options. Number one, I'd like to play the role of Herc. And sometimes instead of Herc, it says Xena a nubile young slave stolen from his village by a band of lusty female slavers. Here's the catch. He can only communicate using his body. Number two, you have any girls that look like Mrs. Bishop? I need to work off some excitement. Or sometimes we get number three, I'd like to be captured by a sarcastic mutant lieutenant interrogated roughly 
then dunked in his mutating vats, which is of course a reference to the Vault Dweller's meeting with Lou during the events of Fallout 1. Either way, she looks us up and down, then nods. I think we can accommodate you. 703 chaps, oh God. And we appear in yet another girl's room. You could melt metal, you know that? Let me teach you some things only a woman can teach. Whoa, that'll cost extra. I'd rather be with Avalon. Oh God, this is of course a reference to Chris Avalon, another developer on the game. Need someone to warm your tent? Stop tickling me. Once we're completely satisfied, we can head back to Miss Kitty and say, you know, I've been finding magazines named Cat's Paw throughout the desert, and I have no idea what they are. I have one right here. We only get this option if we have a copy of the magazine in our inventory. She looks surprised. Let me see, she says, and she glances at the magazine. Well, well, you know, I had heard a rumor that in the pre-war years, the Cat's Paw was a publishing house for pornographic materials. This place was a publishing house, we can say? And she says, yes, the rooms here were used for film shoots with models from across the world. She seems entranced by the magazine. Quite a little piece of history you have there, she says. We get the same response for both of these options. We could say, well, you know, I just read this for the articles. Or we can say, I'm just glad to know what the damn thing is. It's irritating to keep examining it and getting that same message over and over. I'll probably still get it even though it's identified now. And she says, you know, if you can bring me a complete set, say 10 issues, I'll buy them from you. They'd be good for our display, might attract customers. Are you interested? We can say yes and then go try to find 10 Cat's Paw magazines. But if you've been following along this far, you'll know that we've been collecting them throughout our journey. We can in fact find three Cat's Paw magazines here in New Reno alone, which I'll cover as we get to those areas. With 10 copies in our inventory, we can return and again talk with Miss Kitty. Here's that collection of Cat's Paw magazines you asked for, we can say, and she says, wonderful. I'll give you 500 bucks for the set. We can try to pass a barter check by saying, 500 bucks? After collecting all of these? No way, make it a thousand. But she says, mm, 750 and you got a deal. 750? All right then, they're yours, we can say. And she says, here you go, counts out the money and hands it to us. And we walk away with a thousand experience and $750 richer. But if instead of passing the barter check, we agree to her initial 500 and instead say, sounds good, here you go. But hey, careful with the number five, the pages look like they're glued together. Can't imagine why. She'll say, really? And she examines issue number five, then goes through the rest of our stack. Hmm, she says. Well, it looks like you have two of them, so you can have this one back. But let me get the stain out first. And we can say, okay, uh, by the way, that stain isn't mine. I have no idea how it got there. And she says, happens all the time around here. Miss Kitty starts cleaning the magazine, mostly to the sheets, she continues. That should do it, she holds it up. Good issue. Has an article on energy weapons, it looks like. Here you go. An article on energy weapons, we can say thanks. I might read it later. With that, we get 500 bucks and a copy of Cat's Paw issue number five with a completely unique cover. This is the hard to find issue five of Cat's Paw magazine. The pictures aside, this issue has a wonderful article on energy weapons. And by reading it, our energy weapon skill increases by 10%. And unlike other skill bucks, we can use it to increase our energy weapon skill beyond 91%. Heading out of the cat's paw, we can explore this shack right across the street. The guy outside says, I catch you doing a Cleveland steamer on any of my women and I'll kill you. What does he think I am, a dry cleaner? But heading inside, we don't find a whorehouse. We just find a bunch of New Reno locals. Looks like a bit of a slum. They all share the same New Reno citizen dialogue. And we don't find anything of interest or value in here. 
On the other side of the street, we find the Desperado Casino. This, as Jules told us, is the headquarters of the Mordino family. Heading inside, we find a bunch of slot machines. The Mordino goons are not impressed with us, calling us tribal trash. The room to the right has a couple of roulette tables. The room to the left has a bookcase. And if we can pass a sneak check, we find an unidentified box and some booze inside. Heading out and moving towards the bar, we find a man in a leather jacket. Huh? Something you want, amigo? Who are you, we can ask? And he says, me, if you gotta ask. <laughs> Name's Jesus. Jesus Mordino. Same as my dad. He's the big Jesus, head of the whole Mordino family here in Reno. So most call me little Jesus. Prevents confusion, you know. Now, in New Reno, we find a myriad of ways to piss absolutely everybody off. And pissing them off often has the same effect. They just pull out their weapons and attack us. So instead of going over the myriad of ways to die in New Reno, we'll focus on the ways to advance the conversation. And that's to be as respectful as we can. So in this case, we can flatter the guy by saying, oh, I've heard about your family. I hear you guys are a force to be reckoned with. And he says, we Mordinos are gonna run New Reno and Redding too, you'll see. What do you mean about Redding, we can ask? And he says, bunch of no neck miners digging the dirt, but they like to fly, know what I'm saying? They're a bunch of camera lions, we can ask. And he says, well, when they got their first taste of jet, they were. You can't have just one. Where does jet come from, we can ask. And he says, the jet? It comes from here. See, we don't dig for gold, we make it. Liquid gold. Jet. Worth a fortune to the miners. Costs next to nothing to make. We ship it to Redding. They shoot up. They fly. They ship us gold. That simple. How long has this been going on, we can ask? It seems like you would have controlled all of Northern California by now if Jet was that habit-forming. And he says, you're right about that. See, we didn't always have Jet, but we stumbled across this kid. He took a look at the crappy chems we was selling and said he could do better. And he did. Now he works for us. That simple. Who is this kid and where is he, we can ask? He says, kid's name's Myron. As for where he is... That's something you don't need to know. And being respectful, we can say, got it. I had some other questions. He pulls out a knife and picks his fingernails with it. We'll talk about that knife in a bit. Sounds like the Mordino family is the one to hook up with. Can you set me up, we can ask? He checks us over and then nods. We are always looking for new blood, especially new blood that's willing to spill blood, know what I'm saying? Go upstairs, talk to my pa, tell him I sent you, and maybe we can do business. All right, so we've got an invitation. We can talk to the barkeeper behind him. What's your poison, pal? He doesn't have a lot of dialogue. He just sells booze and jet, and he doesn't have any dollars to barter with. That's a theme we'll see from many of the chem merchants here. We can try to loot the bookshelves here, but almost all of them are guarded. And we have to have a pretty high sneak skill to be able to loot them. The middle room is empty, and we find two bathrooms to the north on this floor. Just outside the men's, we find a woman. Ken, can I borrow some cash? Look, I'll pay you back, she says. The man inside, presumably Ken, is a chem merchant, and he only has 45 bucks on his inventory. If and only if we have the magic eight ball, we find some grenades in this bathroom, but we haven't come upon the eight ball yet. The women's restroom is empty. Heading towards the stairs, we see a staircase leading to a basement, but we'll explore that in a bit. Instead, let's head upstairs to meet with the big man himself. On the top floor, we find many of the rooms where the Mordino goons live. There are two bathrooms to the right. In one, we find a closet with an ice cooler on the ground. Inside, we can get a first aid kit and some Molotov cocktails. Most of the bookshelves in each of these rooms are empty, and almost all of them are guarded. In one, we find a 10 millimeter pistol with some ammunition. In another, we find a pack of marked cards. This pack of cards was part of a quest that was cut from the game, so it has no practical use. And the others have guards that are too close, so we can't inspect them. Heading into the bedrooms in the middle of the floor, we pass by some guards, and when we enter the main bedroom, Big Jesus Mordino addresses us. The man turns to face you. He looks sick with fever. Sweat trickles down his face and stains his clothes. He's staring at you. It looks like he's waiting for you to speak. Are you Jesus Mordino, we can ask? The man speaks in a raspy voice. I am Jesus Mordino. You will address me as Senor Mordino. 
A bead of sweat trickles down his forehead. What is your business with me? From here on out, we have to choose the dialogue options that refer to him as Signor Mordino or else we lose reputation with him and he can turn hostile. I spoke to your son, Signor Mordino. I'm looking for work. He studies us for a long time, then shakes his head. You do not look strong enough. I have no work for you. Let me prove myself, Signor Mordino. I can do it, we can say. Mordino studies us again. Very well. I have work for you. Take. He takes a deep, wheezing breath and wipes sweat from his forehead. This package to the stables north of Reno. Give it to a man, Ramirez, then return. I will go there now, Signor Mordino. Head north up Virgin Street, past the casinos. Follow the trail that leads outside of town. You will come to the stables. Now go. And we can follow his directions. We arrive at the stables. The stables are where Jules told us we could find Myron, the inventor of Jet. But I'm all out of time. In our next episode, we will fully explore the stable and try to find this Myron character to see if we can track down the source of Jet in the wasteland. I publish many videos each and every week, so if you don't want to miss it, be sure to subscribe and to click that bell notification button. If you have and you still feel like you're missing out on YouTube notifications, consider following me on Twitter at Oxhorn. I update Twitter manually with every new piece of content that I publish. I have a shirt shop with completely unique designs that you can't find anywhere else. My designs come on shirts in a variety of men's, women's, and children's sizes, and in a wide array of colors. You can find them on other products as well, like smartphone cases, pillows, posters, mugs, stickers, prints, etc. So if interested, you can find a link to my shop in the description below, or you can click here. If you like what I do and you want to support me in a more personal way, consider becoming a patron on Patreon or a member here on YouTube. But more than anything, I'm just so glad you're here watching this video with me today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you soon with more brand new videos.